All right, what I'd like to do is show you how to complete the square. And I'm just gonna work with a very basic um, problem. Teresa Rodmaker, can you please call extension 1002? All right, so when I'm completing the square, there's a couple things I'm gonna work on. I'm just gonna kind of do step by step and I'll explain, and then I'd like you to do it on your own, um, what exactly I'm doing. So when we're completing the square, uh, what completing the square helps us do is that one thing, it gets us into the standard form of a, uh, of a uh, quadratic equation. So it puts us in standard form, which is very helpful when we're trying to identify the vertex. Um, it also helps, uh, it's also another way to solve for x. So instead of doing the quadratic formula, or if you can't factor a problem, um, then what you can do is, you can do, uh, you know, you can complete the square. So this problem actually uh, looks like it uh, can, be, can be factored. Um, you know, if I was gonna factor this, Right? So this could be easily factored, but I'm going to show you completing the square so you can see that I'm still going to get the same answers. All right? So x is equal to negative 3 and x equals 1. So we know what the answers are going to be by factoring. And let's complete the square. So the first thing, complete the square, what I'm going to do is I need to get it to a, a perfect square trinomial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put parentheses around my x values. All right? So I'll go ahead and do that now with your um, function. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to isolate my x values. And what I'm going to do is I want to get this to be a perfect square trinomial. I don't really care about my constant right now. It's just over there. And the other important thing is I need to make sure there's a 1 in front of this number. So if there's a 2 or if there's a negative 1, whatever's in front of there, I'm going to have to factor out. Now, what you're going to want, the reason why I put parentheses just around the x's is you only want to factor that out out of here. You don't need to factor it out of this negative three. We just leave that constant kind of on its own. So if I did have something here, let's say I had a two here, I would have to factor a two out of the x squared and a two out of the x. Fortunately for this first problem, I have nothing in front of the x, so I'm good. So now, to get this to be a perfect square trinomial, what I'm gonna have to do is what we call our b over two squared. And if you remember a quadratic formula, is in the form of, or you know, quadratic form is a x squared plus b x plus c. So my b in this equation is two. So I have two over two squared. Two divided by two is one. One squared is equal to one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that one into my equation. So now I have f of x equals x squared plus two x plus one minus three. Now, I added a one on the right side. So if I'm gonna add a one, to make an equation you know, still the same, you have to add one and subtract one. Did you do the same thing you find your b over two? Yeah. Okay, did you add it? Make sure you add it inside the parentheses. And then whatever you add, make sure you subtract. Because you gotta keep an equation the same, right? If I say three is equal to three, we all know that's true, but if you add a one to this side, now that's not true anymore, right? Now three is equal to four. So if I'm gonna add a one, I also have to subtract the one. Now why would we do that? We don't, we would never do that. But you need, to rep, you need to show that this is why it makes sense. You can't just add and expect things still to be true. Add and subtract. But, so why did, I, why did I add it inside the parentheses? Why would I do this? Or what's even the point of doing this? Well, this we'll call a perfect square trinomial. And what's so important about this is this can be factored down when I like factor this um, or uh, you know break this into binomials. This is actually a binomial squared. So I could actually rewrite this as x plus one times x plus one. And if I was to expand that, I would get x squared plus two x plus one. Now, an easy way to look at this is how do I always how can I get this to be a, a, a binomial squared? Well, if you kind of look at it as x plus or minus b over two squared. And this is what we want to get. We want, this is our end point that we want to get to. We want to get a binomial squared. So I look at this and I say, what was b over two? b over two was one, right? So I look at this and I say, well, if I did x plus one squared, one times one is one, 
And then if I was to factor this, you know, you'd have one x plus one x, which is two x, right? If this middle term was negative, then I would have x minus one. Make sense? So I'm gonna leave this as x plus one squared, and then negative three minus one is a negative four. Now, what I have just done is completed the square. So now, this is what we call in standard form. And you know, if I wanted to find the vertex of this equation, it's so easy. The vertex is the opposite of inside the function negative one and negative four. So it's really easy to find the vertex. The other thing that's really helpful about this is it's really easy to find your zeros or your x-intercepts. So if I wanted to find the zeros, what I need to do is I need to put my output value as zero. So I'd say zero equals x plus one squared minus four. And now what I need to do is I can solve for x. I'll let you finish writing just a little bit, let you take it in. Then you might be going a little fast. So I'm just talking. Question? Good. So now to solve for x, you gotta get the x by itself, right? Undo subtraction first. Right? Now I take the root. So therefore I have um, square root of four equals x plus one minus the one. X equals negative one plus or minus the square root of two. Now remember our two answers was negative three and negative four, right? I'm sorry, it's square root of four. So I have x equals negative one plus or minus, the square root of four is two. So negative one plus two is negative one, and negative one minus two is negative three. Are those the same two answers I got when I did factoring? Yes, they are. So some people like, you know, so when, it's e when you can factor a problem, it's very easy just to factor it. However, if it's, a hard, it's a problem that you cannot factor, completing the square and then set it equal to zero is a very easy way to find the zeros of a function. Ready for a test?